Hi, and welcome to Top Solid 7. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the new optimized bar pull command. This command is available as of 7.13, which was released earlier this year. Now, to set the pace, I want to show you a simulation of the end result we're looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and simulate the tool path that I have here. I'm going to go ahead and select it all. I'll set the simulation to go. So here you can see that I'm taking with my B axis, I'm turning down the face, I'm going to retract for safety, and I'm rotating my B to some other angle, kind of showing off a little bit just because I can. B axes are fun to play with. After we're finished roughing, we're going to go tool change, we're going to switch to a neutral tool, we'll have it at some kind of angle, I think it's 30 degrees if memory serves. We'll come here and we'll finish turn that. After that, we're going to go ahead and do the bar pulling. So you're going to see the sub spindle come in. It's going to grab on, pull it out, go away. And now we're going to orient the part and we're going to do the milling. Now, why did we decide to do that? Well, again, this is just to take a little part to show you uh, how to do a bar pull, but let's go take a look. So I'm going to go to a project that's prepared. It just doesn't have the bar pull in it. If we go look at that same slot milling that we did without the bar pull, let's go simulate that. OK, it does it. But we're getting pretty close to the, the machine stroke limits this way. OK, and, you know, maybe you're just nervous. Everything's getting too close to each other. You know you're going to have to bar pull anyway, so you may as well bar pull then do the milling. Why not? So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to take my machining stage and roll back before that slot milling. So now the slot milling has never happened. Now we're going to go to our additional tab. And I'm going to choose a command that we call virtual jog. What I want you to think of virtual jog is, is think of it as going on your machine and programming in MDI mode, only it's full of chocolatey goodness. And here's what I mean. You have full simulation in real time as you're entering the data and you're going to see that happen as we go so let's start a virtual jog first thing that I want to do in my virtual jog because I'm doing a part transfer my origin or my work offset here is based off of driving a tool off of here so I need to make this the driving component so that I can come in and grab the part to do that what I need to do is go make a new WCS so let's do it I'm gonna to go to my WCS solutions I can make it on the fly or I could have made it ahead of time. I'm going to go and make it on the fly and I'm just going to say create on frame. The frame I'm going to use is the same as my main zero. That's fine. The only thing that's changing is what's being driven. I'm going to drive the sub spindle with this. I'm even going to give it a unique name. I'm going to call it bar pole slash part transfer because I can use this for both of those operations. I'm going to go ahead and green check mark. You'll see that we're using that one there. Now we're all set. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure the spindle is spinning. So I'm going to say my rotating element is the part. I can rotate clockwise, counterclockwise, that's up to you. If I do that, I need some feeds and speeds. That's what this is telling me. So I'm going to go ahead and activate that. I'm going to run in inches today, and I'm going to say let's run this at 500 RPM. And when we go to feed rate, let's go at maybe 25 inches a minute. Good enough. Now we can actually start the bar pull. Here, I'm going to start by choosing what I want to do. And what I want to do first is I want to make sure, I'm going to hold release part, that the subspindle jaws are open. So I'm going to set this to subspindle, release part, green check. Now, like all machines, when you're opening the jaws, it takes a few seconds. So I actually program in a delay or a dwell. Pick however much time it is. You know your machines. For this demo's sake, I'm going to say five seconds. After I do that, the jaws are ready. I can now go to approach to hold part. Now, when I go to approach to hold part, it's kind of cool. The software is going to take the driven point of my sub spindle and it's going to bring it over to my part. How? Well, I can bring it right to the stock, current stock condition, to the finish, or to a specific point. And just to make it easy to understand, I'm going to go to a specific point. And the point is going to be the front of the part. Now, that's all I'm going to do. And watch what happens. My spindle is now all the way in that part, jamming into this spindle. Why? 
Now let's go back and edit this and have a look. If I zoom out, you can see a frame back here, or a coordinate system. When we make machine definitions in Top Solid, we make a machine definition, or we make the zero of the subspindle at the mounting point of the chuck. And the reason we do that is because we believe our customers are going to change chucks, change jaws, change everything. So to simplify this, this is how we do it. So that's the driven point, but now we have to compensate for the length of this. And you know what? I just grabbed this machine. I have no idea what that distance is, but that's okay because in the middle of using any function in Top Solid, you can go to analysis, you can come over here to analyze geometry. And for example, I want to analyze a distance. So I'm going to zoom up here and let's rotate this a little bit so you guys can see better. And I'm going to use rotative selection. I'm holding my left button down, tapping my right button until I get to that point. And I'm going to zoom up and I'm going to grab that point there. And this gives me, of course, the direct distance, which we don't want. We want the delta distance relative to Z. And over here in the results button, you actually have text you can copy. So I'm going to hit Control C on that, or you can right click copy, whatever makes you happy. And now I can shift that driving point by that. But now all this means is that I'm going to rapid the front of my chuck right up to that front of the part. And we don't want that. So I'm going to say let's go up to the front of the part plus one inch. Perfect. Next, I want to switch to feed rate here. And again, I'm calculating everything off of this point here. Sorry. And I want to be with my shift minus the amount I want to hold by. Watch. If I click OK, that spindle has now moved up. So if I come here and we watch the animation, boom. Now we're holding it by one inch. I think we can do better. Let's go in and edit this. Come to here. Let's say 1.5. Green check. That's better. So at this point now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the part. So I'm going to set myself to hold on the sub spindle. I'm going to go ahead and activate a delay. My delay, again, five seconds. The reason why I like Virtual Jog is because Virtual Jog puts you in the driver's seat. You're not relying on your post processor to have everything perfect. The post should do what you tell it to do. At least that's what we believe at Top Solid. So we give you the tools to actually program these complex machines movement by movement in some cases if you need to. That's what Virtual Jog is all about. So I've held onto the part on the subspindle. I have my delay. Now I'm going to go hold release part one more time. I'm going to release on the main spindle and add a delay. Okay. Now at this point, it's time to do the bar pull. So let's go to our next option. It's called part pulling. When I go to part pulling, the software gives me a really awesome choice here called shift of part size. Again, these are 3D models. The software knows how long that part is. Okay, that's why you buy software. Software should be smart. So if I click here and say shift of part size, that's going to automatically pull this out the length of that part, which is almost perfect. What we want to do is we want to also allow for the width of our parting tool, plus any stock we may leave. So that's why we have the shift here again. So I'm going to say I'm going to use a quarter inch parting tool eventually, plus I'm going to leave 50 thousandths on the face to machine off on the sub spindle because maybe it's an accurate face and I want to be able to use cutter comp on it. Who knows? Next, do we want to create a shifted origin? And I'll explain that here in a second. If I go here, notice now that's pulled out, right? That's where my zero was. So that's the width of my groove insert plus my 50 thousandths. Kind of cool. Now the shift of the origin, let's talk about that. If I click OK right now, notice my origin is still back where it was. Because maybe on your machine, that's the way it works. Maybe on your machine, if you do a bar pull, the origin has to shift as well, or maybe you need a new origin, okay? In that case, then you come in, oops, excuse me, you come into here to the uh, part pulling, and you say create shifted origins. And now let's look. Now notice the origin is out here. And you can rename it to be 56 or 58 or 54.1 or whatever the work offset is you want to use. Okay? 
Now, I'm going to undo mine because I want to keep it here just for sample sake. Now, we have done our bar pull. At this point, I'm going to rename my virtual jog, selected F2. I'm going to say approach and pull. Now, we need to do a second virtual jog. The reason we want to do a second virtual jog is because I want to let go and send my subspindle home. So here's what we do. I'm going to start again by making sure I have the right WCS. That's important. So I'm going to go to my part transfer frame, right? Or bar pull frame. Now, from here, I'm going to activate fees and speeds, right? I'm going to come over here. I'm going to activate part, uh, part rotation. Again, we're going to say that this is 500 RPM. 25 inches a minute, okay? And now we can go do our work. In our last operation, we just pulled the bar out. So now what we wanna do is we're going to hold on the main spindle. Give it a, oops, pardon me. Sorry, I clicked too fast. I'm gonna go hold on the main spindle. Even demo guys make mistakes. And I'm going to go here to uh, my delay. Again, we'll keep it with five seconds. Maybe your machine's two seconds. Maybe one second's enough. You know your machine's better. And now I'm going to go here to release part because I want to release the subspindle. So I'm going to release the subspindle. One more delay. Why not? Five seconds. And now. I want to send it home, so I'm just going to go to coordinate motion. Notice here I'm driving the W axis. So I'm going to say I want to output that in rapid, and I want to send it to the max axis value, which just sent it home. Perfect. Okay, so I approached and pulled, and this one is going to be send W home. I like it. Now, remember I had rolled back before my slot milling. My part is in a whole new location, right? Because now it's up here. All I did is end my insertion, rebuilt the toolpath. I hit refresh up here. And if I simulate this, check it out. It's fine. I don't have to repick geometry. I don't have to do anything. That's the parametric nature of the software. If I go and simulate everything, I'll go from that turning operation. So here, the tools are the the bar is still in or the part's still close to the main spindle, however you want to call it, right? And now here, we're going to come in. Oh, I don't have my spindle spinning, sorry. Come out, move away, and now that tool's coming in. And then just to show you the end result, end result, let's go ahead and get out of here. And let's go ahead and generate some G-code. So I'll do this for an Integrex. I'll hit go. I'll make the uh, stuff colored so you can see it better. So here's my turn roughing, roughing. Now I'm contouring, right? Approach and pull. So set some fields. There's my movement to rapid, right? There's my delay, by the way. Then I'm feeding to where I need to be. Having my delay again, I'm closing jaws. Having my delay again, and then pulling the part out. Then to send my W home, closing jaws, so forth, so on, send it home. At the end of the day then, there's my milling, and off you go. So hopefully you found this video to be, uh, well, at least educational, but hopefully you liked what you see. Have a great day.